Hi friends, in this tutorial we are going to discuss about PPR322, the first widely used vector in genetic engineering. The name PPR322 was named after its discoverer Bolivar and Rodrix in 1970s. And this is the plasmid PPR322 and we will be discussing in all the elements of this particular vector in detail. And this is the first widely used genetically engineered plasmid in recombinant DNA technology. And these are the PPR322 elements. There is an or origin of replication that is from E. coli origin. Then unique restriction sites. There are at least 12 unique restriction sites in PPR322. Examples like PAMH1, SAL1, PV1, PST1, etc. And the third thing is the selectable marker. There are two selectable markers, an ampicillin resistance region and also a tetracycline resistance region containing the genes that will impart resistance towards these antibiotics. And this vector is 4361 base space in length and is the most widely used vector in genetic engineering. First of all, ORI. ORI is derived from E. coli plasmid, E. coli ORI. The function of ORI is well, whenever we have introduced this vector into a suitable host, ORI is a sequence that is essentially required for replication of this particular vector inside the host. Secondly, restriction enzymes. There are at least 12 unique restriction sites in PPR322, PAMH1, SAL1, PST1, PV1 and all within the selectable marker regions. And this is the function. So we are, in order to integrate our desired gene into the vector, actually we are using these restriction sites. We are actually making a cut in this PAMH1 site or any of the restriction site and introducing our gene of interest in that site. So the function of these restriction enzymes, in order to integrate our gene of interest into the vector, we need to make cleave in the DNA segments and this is by restriction enzymes or restriction sites. The third major element that is a selectable marker, there are two marker regions. This is uh, the ampicillin resistant re resistance region that is imparting resistance that, is, that contain genes that provide resistance to the host uh, while growing in an ampicillin medium and this is the tetracycline resistance where also this will provide resistance against tetracycline in a tetracycline containing medium and this will help us in selecting transformed colonies from the rest. Once the transformation experiment is complete, we will be getting three types of colonies. Majority non-transformed without a vector and secondly transformed with unaltered vector. Vector has introduced into the bacterium but without our gene of interest. Third, transformed with recombinant vector, the colonies that we need to select. And this is a tedious process as the number of colonies that with transformed recombinant vector will be always very low. So we need to select, isolate these from the rest. So these are the three types of colonies. Here comes the use of selectable markers. So this is a master plate containing all the colonies. From this we need to find out which of the colony contains our gene of interest. So non-transformed cannot grow on ampicillin or tetracycline medium as that vector is not introduced into the the bacterium doesn't have the innate capability to grow in ampicillin or tetracycline contained medium. So it cannot grow in a medium where there is tetracycline or ampicillin. Then the second type transformed with non-recombinant vector. Here this particular vector has both ampicillin and tetracycline resistance genes so that this particular vector containing colonies can grow on both ampicillin and tetracycline containing medium. The third one that we need to select that is the transformed with recombinant vector. In the case of transformed with recombinant vector, it can grow in ampicillin medium based on where we inserted the gene. In this case, in the example, we have inserted our gene of interest in tetracycline resistance region using PAMH1 as a restriction site. So once the gene has integrated into that site, that gene, that gene is no more functioning. This particular bacterium with our desired gene cannot grow in tetracycline medium. It can grow only in ampicillin medium. The inactivity of a gene once our desired gene is inserted, the process is called as insertional inactivation. So this our transformed recombinants can grow only in ampicillin medium and cannot grow in tetracycline medium due to insertional inactivation. So that selectable markers are actually helping us in, in, in picking out our desired colonies with our gene of interest. Hope things are clear. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com. Thank you so much for watching.